Good afternoon, traders and investors. It's Will back with another one. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope everybody had a great long weekend. Today, we had a bit of a pullback as we were expecting here on SPY and QQQ and most of our major sectors. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go over our major indexes, our major tech names, and also the positions and a bit of portfolio performance, the positions that I took today. So keep tuned for that near the end. It's going to be a little bit of a new format. I'm going to try to make these videos shorter, guys. I know I've been kind of making a bit of a long, bit of longer videos in the 30-minute range. So we're going to try to keep it in the 20-minute range if possible. You guys know that I do like talking a lot, and I hope you do appreciate my, you know, longer insights on a lot of these charts. But for purposes of wanting to cover more things, um, we're going to try to keep it a bit lower because I am going to start putting out some videos on stock-specific names and position specific names like top five growth stocks I'm looking at now, top five value stocks I may be looking at right now. So we're going to kind of rearrange the content a little bit rather than trying to include everything in these daily market updates. So without further ado, let's get into some charts. S&P 500 guys, the bulls are in full control. As I was saying last week in my videos, we were expecting a pullback. We got it. I mean, it's not that much of a pullback, but all we were expecting is some confluence here with the 12 EMA. Daily higher lows here. Anything above 427 is still a daily higher low. I would look with some confluence here on the 12 EMA. Bulls still in full control. Did a good job, however, of cooling off this RSI. It was kind of a cheat day because it did help that we had a holiday. And during the holiday, if you look at the futures, I mean, we did have a few negative days here on the uh, on the futures themselves here. I don't know why. It's, oh, wait, I have to refresh my full trading view here. My apologies, guys. Bear with me for that. Don't want to have to redo the entire intro for it. So if I'm looking here, they discontinued the other tickers. But see, in the last three days here, we did get some good pullback. So that was basically Friday, Monday and today cooled off the RSI on the futures. And that's why I say on the actual spy, it looks like you're cheating, but we did have a gap down open here. Bulls in full control. So still, what we are looking for, guys, is we're just looking for slight pullbacks. If it does pull back more than our daily higher low here at 426, well, anything pretty much above 409, 410 is going to be a weekly higher low. Targets to the upside still remain this area right here, guys. This supply zone, right, starting at 453 all the way up to 460. QQQs now, well, QQQs did a very good job of holding up most of the market today. As we can see, we gapped down, but then we proceeded to close with a green candle despite being negative on the day. So great, great, great job of some intraday recovery. We had a couple names that were kind of outliers here on the day. As a matter of fact, if you take a look at the heat map here, you'll see that NVIDIA, Tesla, Meta had a very, very, very good day, especially Tesla here keeps pushing and we'll look at that chart later, but also my little guy PayPal down here had a beautiful day today and we'll look more into that as well. But most of the market read today, it was no secret, it was a down day, but not too much of a violent down day, really kind of a, you know, very, very muted down day in my opinion. There were some uh, premium, good, decent premium on some, names, on some names, which I'll cover a bit later. One day relative performance, as you can see, all sectors in the red, but not really terribly rare, red in the larger ones like financials, healthcare and technology, right? So technology, healthcare and financials, kind of only about negative half a percent if I were to average all three. And it's really our smaller sectors that kind of really tanked today. So really, really happy about that day. You know, if, if we can pull back on days like if we can have pullback days like this, this market is really going nowhere down quickly. It's really all up to the bears to, to, to truly prove it to us at this point, right? So on the QQQ, really anything above 349 here is just going to be a daily higher low. We're looking for confluence with that 12 EMA. To the upside, I mean, even on the weekly chart, right, as we were stating last week, guys, so much space to set a potential weekly higher low if we do dip. As of now, no real signs for that. We're nearing the top area of our resistance here. I would put it at 372. So watch out for that level right there. XLF financials. So what happened last week is we broke above our 3350 resistance. However, today gap down below it. So it's kind of like a breakout and no follow through, unfortunately. I would have loved to see us hold this support level. Bulls were not able to do it. However, I am still confident in their ability to be setting in motion here a nice weekly uptrend, right? All is not lost. We did make a higher high compared to this high. Not by much, I agree. But bulls have created a lot of space off the bottom here to if this week, if we do kind of just consolidate within this candle here, because this is a weekly candle, right? I do believe that the next couple of weeks have us set up nicely for some continuation. So keep an eye on that. 
We are currently holding our support levels. Wouldn't really want to see us lose 3290 though, guys. That's kind of my line in the sand level. Really need to see the bulls hold there. If not, we could trickle down a bit further. We do have moving average support here as well and a horizontal support. So we should get some fairly good support. I'm confident in the financials bulls at this point. Healthcare. Healthcare did a good job of recovering intraday. I mean, look at this gap down open. What a big gap down open, right? We gap down almost, let me throw the uh, percentage on that. We gap down pretty much 1.3% and intraday recovered, you know, almost all of it, right? Before kind of tapering off at the end of the day there. So really, really, really good job by the bulls of kind of closing this gap, doing a good job of pushing up higher here. We are kind of maintaining at this point. We're maintaining our daily uptrends, right? So we got our higher lows every single time. Hopefully the bulls can actually hold this one. It would be very, very good if they can. Why? Because what we've been looking for, guys, is we're looking for the weekly trend change. I need to see 135 break and hold above if we want to say that this is a weekly confirmed uptrend. As of now, kind of, you know, the day today was kind of a muted day. We're kind of staying within these candles ranges. I need to see a break up towards 135 to have real confidence in the bulls at this point, or the worst case scenario at this point is we're gonna end up with a tightening range. However, I would like to see this week kind of close towards the highs of these candles if possible. IWM. IWM doing a good job here of kind of just holding on, right? We do have a lot of horizontal support here around the 185 area. We also did have our 12 EMA on the daily, so that's coming in handy, guys. IWM is in full weekly breakout mode. If we do consolidate here for this week and potentially next week, we have some good support here from the moving averages. Anything above 172.60 is just going to be a weekly higher low. This chart, once again, I'll remind you, is what we're looking for on XLF. Need the breakout like IWM did of this range, right? Then it could come down and sit here and move one leg higher thereafter, right? So that's what I kind of want to see. I'm perfectly fine with IWM taking a little breather this week if it wants to. It's run decently in the last three weeks. You wouldn't want to cut too, too, too deep though, but we do have some really good horizontal support uh, down here with the moving averages, 181 area. If we do get a pullback, guys, I will be looking to write options under the 178 line here because I do believe that bulls will be able to hold that zone. We're doing a great job. What we need to see to the upside, well, we need to break last week's high, right? So at that point, we're now sitting at 189.10, 189.20. So we do need to break that high if we want to see that this weekly leg is still alive. For the time being now, just looks like some really healthy consolidation, guys, in my opinion, okay? Value names. Value names pulled back a lot today. Not going to lie, they did. A lot of big value names that were running, especially names like Nike, pulled back a lot today. And you saw it on the charts, right? So what were we looking for on the Dow Jones? It's clearer on the weekly at this point. We want this weekly inverse head and shoulders to manifest itself and keep pushing hard, right? So levels to the upside to watch, 34,600. Definitely need a break of that this week or the next week if this weekly push wants to stay alive. If we do get a bit of weekly consolidation, I wouldn't be too worried here, right? We do have the moving average support down here. We are currently in a weekly uptrend. Now it did break with not so much follow through. You can see that it did break this level, right? But we did not get as much follow through as I would have liked to see. However, this is technically a weekly uptrend, right? Higher highs, higher lows. It's looking good. I just need the bulls to hold on to these levels as best as they can and get our breakout. I do believe that this pattern will play out to the upside. Need to give it a little bit of time here because obviously the rest of our markets here, SPY and QQQ on the daily, were fairly overbought, right? So now we are getting some decent little pullbacks as well as the rest of the market here. So it could be a good opportunity for bulls to reload, buy that dip and push higher. As of now, guys, that's kind of my mentality in this whole market. Until bears really start proving to me that they want to actually make lower lows on the daily and reverse the entire trends. I mean, the bulls are in full control of the daily and weekly timeframes on most of these indexes at that point, right? And that's not an easy thing to turn around. Are we getting a slightly toppish on some names? Yes, but do we have a lot of other names that are kept low that can counterbalance if we do get a tech sell-off in Apple, Nvidia, Tesla, stuff like that, right? We do. A lot of value names can actually, value names, financials, and healthcare can actually hold that 
uh, level hold those levels strong on SPY. So that's what we want to see. We want to see a market where we do have, if some names cool off, other names have a lot of room to kind of make up for that cool off. So that's what I'm seeing as of now. Now, let's get into Bitcoin. Bitcoin, finally, I can talk about Bitcoin in a decent light, right? So what we were looking for, guys, I'll remind you, I'll take it top down. We were looking for the monthly higher low. Potentially, 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 we may be able to say that June is that monthly higher low with what we've just done. Why? We've made some significant progress in re reversing this daily bear. I mean, it's daily and weekly, right? It's a bearish channel bearish trending channel to the downside this was a weekly downtrend it was a daily downtrend and what i was saying last week is until we can reverse this daily downtrend right the bulls aren't gonna do anything what did we do over the last couple days is over the weekend we put in some nice movement to the upside completely engulfed our most recent move to the downside sat kind of bull flagged here now we've finally set a daily uptrend the first daily uptrend in quite some time as a matter of fact right here we tried to do it gave it all back we're never able to set a daily uptrend here this is the first daily uptrend arguably since our breakout 230k right so very very bullish on this we're now above our channel it will be very interesting to see how bitcoin plays this out this candle closes in six minutes on the daily. It's going to close very, very, very strong. Usually when you see such a bullish candle uh, close like this, wouldn't be surprised if we do get some continuation further to the upside. If not, we do have some decent uh, horizontal support at this point with the 28,000 level. And we also have our channel down here. Keep in mind, the moving averages are now starting to cross over one another. So the 12 wants to cross above the 12, the 26 EMA. Very, very good sign for a trending market to the upside beginning potentially. And we do have MACD now pointing to the upside. RSI obviously curling up as well. So bulls have done a great job now of creating space. Anything above 26,300 is going to be a daily higher low. Tons of space. We now have a channel that we can fall back onto. We're above the moving averages in a significant way, which we haven't really had since our last move up end of May, right? Been almost a month. So looking good for crypto. Happy about that, right? The next stage, if we can confirm a bit more of this daily uptrend, right? The next stage is we're going to be looking to create enough space off of our 24,800 bottom to set up for a weekly trend change and if we can get the weekly trend change back to the bulls guys i will be confident in saying that this is our monthly higher low and that we're starting to push higher into potentially a second leg up this would be leg number one we want to see leg number two leg number two can push us high 30s right i'm looking for 38,000 as my next target on crypto Moving on to Apple. So covering our tech names quite quickly here. Nothing much has changed. We were expecting daily pullbacks. We are getting them. So as you can see, Apple ended slightly positive after hours. Pretty much gave it all back, right? Basically flat, guys, on the day. What it's allowing us to do, though, the last couple of days, cool off the RSI. Now, I know it's not a massive cool off, but it is a cool off in RSI, guys. The 12 EMA is going to be the level to watch on a lot of these tech names. If bears cannot take this 12 EMA, these charts aren't going anywhere, right? Weekly uptrend is absolutely monstrous at this point. We have support down here at around the 176, 175 area. Keep in mind that on the weekly time frame as well. On the daily time frame, I would say, right, you really don't want to lose anything below the 182 level, or you can set up for something like this. But as of now, bulls are in absolute full control on Apple. If you want to zoom in a little bit, keep an eye on your four hour. If we start losing the four hour 12 EMA in a significant fashion, you may be setting up to finally put in more of a move to the downside. As of now, no signs of that at all. Bulls are in control. Amazon consolidating sideways here at our higher levels, doing a very, very good job. RSI is now cooled down, right? We're not really overbought anymore, even though we're high. So Bulls doing a great job of just grinding this 12 EMA, not letting bears get take back much of that move at all. The weekly as well, you can see, it's kind of like flattening out here to the top. Does this mean that we're big due for a big reversal? Potentially, a lot of people are expecting that, but could we also consolidate sideways like Google and just push higher for another leg? Absolutely. As I said, guys, it's up to the bears to prove to us that they want to reverse the daily timeframes. Same as Apple, keep an eye on your four hour 12 EMA, right? We're kind of grinding it now, really consolidating sideways, tightening range forming here. So we're gonna break whichever area, whichever 
way we break, right, could be a deciding factor for the next two weeks to come. But as of now, I'm not really seeing any bearish signals for a lot of these charts other than the fact that we're kind of curling off and they do look slightly weak, but they could just accumulate at the higher levels, guys. They don't need to drop off much. Even if Amazon were to drop around the 120 area, that would be a very, very decent area to drop off to. We have a lot of moving average confluence up here, right? So tons and tons of support. We got horizontal support. We have our moving averages down here, right? We're in a massive weekly uptrend. So it's gonna take so much for the bears to reverse this. I will be in a buyer of Amazon. If we can dip down to around 120, I'll be looking for options in the 115 range and I'll be writing those all day confidently because as of now, the bulls are in full control. Google, same thing as Amazon. Google doing a very good job of holding this area that I've been talking about in my videos now for the past three weeks at this point. As soon as we cracked it, I knew that since it was previous resistance, it will be acting as a very big support. It has been acting as very big support. However, we are looking at accumulation right now, right? Same thing with Amazon. The direction in which it breaks is basically up to the market at this point. If technology takes a breather, a lot of these big tech names will get taken down. But if it's just healthy rotation and we continue our leg up, do not be surprised if Google cracks its 130 high and pushes to the further level, right? This bulls are in full control, guys. It's a weekly uptrend. At this point, this is a weekly bull flag. Until the bears prove to me that it's not, it will remain in my mind a weekly bull flag or a weekly tightening range for a further break to the upside. Decent, decent horizontal support here with this range here. The moving averages are having time to catch up now. So bulls are doing a great job of just holding this levels. If we do break down into the 120 area or below, I will also be looking to write puts on Google in the 115 to 112 range. That's kind of my sweet spot that I'm eyeing. I will be writing those all day, no problem at all. Keep an eye, guys, on this zone right here. If we cannot break through it, we are not going anywhere further to the downside here. We will just continue to accumulate, continue to cool off the RSI in a very healthy fashion, getting ready for our next leg up on these markets. I'm really not seeing any indication these markets are ready to roll over in a significant fashion. Maybe three, four percent, but nothing more than that, right? A lot of negative catalysts are off the table. So you can't expect a market to flush like on only recession potential, right? The recession has been baked in, guys, at this point for a year and a half. We've been talking about it. Tech earnings got crushed last year. Value earnings have gotten crushed in Q1 of this year and in the guidance for the remainder of the year. I mean, so many negative catalysts are off the table at this point that you can't really be expecting for a 20 to 30% further drawdown when so many names now are at new all-time highs and the indexes are only eight, nine percent off of all-time highs, right? It usually doesn't work like that. The markets are forward-looking. We've priced in a lot of the negative catalysts already, okay? Microsoft, Microsoft doing a very good job here, once again, of holding the higher levels. Bit of a big red day uh, Friday and today, right? Down about 4% off the highs. I know you guys are saying, Oh, well, it's not much. It's still close to all time highs. Well, I mean, it's a pullback, right? Look at the RSI cooled off the RSI just in those two days on the weekly as well. We're kind of grind grinding the higher levels here, but nothing extreme. So this chart still looks very, very healthy. In my opinion, Microsoft, right? Basically anything above, you know, in my opinion, 330, Oops, 3.30 is still very, very, very healthy consolidation, right? Still a lot of room down to our 3.23 low, right? For, for the bears to potentially take over in something like this fashion, right? To where we flush and then we're in weekly consolidation, but it's looking good. As long as bulls control these 12 EMAs guys on these charts like Apple, Microsoft and the likes, right? It's gonna be very, very, very tough. So I'm looking at this on a day by day basis. The bulls are in full control. The four hour shows that as well, right? In full control of the EMAs here. So I'm taking it day by day. Microsoft looking very good. Next resistance is the previous all time high. Obviously we were just there, 352. And if we're looking to consolidate further on the weekly, well, I would say anything above 323 is still just a weekly higher low at this point. So decent amount of space right? And then even that below, we do have the moving average, but keep in mind, guys, I mean, when in doubt, just look at the monthlies, just look at the monthlies, even if you, even in the worst possible case scenario, okay? If we do get an extended pullback, let's say July and August aren't that really great of months or whatnot because of seasonality, there's so much space, guys. There's so much space for you to be able to buy the dip and load up 
before a potential next upswing in late Q3, Q4, when really all the cards are out on the table and we really have a better gauge of, of whether or not we're going to actually achieve terminal rates like was in the last SEP or if we're actually going to go into a recession or how much of a earnings crush are we actually going to have, right? So once we'll have all the information, it may do something like this, but there's no reason why it also can't just keep just grinding higher as well, right? Like, look, my, it can do it, guys. It can do it. It may have two negative months, but then it'll just follow with further upside and upside and upside, grinding higher, grinding higher. So bulls look looking very, very good on Microsoft as well. I'm not buying up here, but I understand if you're definitely holding your stock up here if you're a long-term investor, right? Meta, completely disregarding at this point the negative divergence that we were drawing last week, right? So kind of disregarding it, Meta doing a good, great job. 12 EMA, I'm going to sound like a broken record at this point, right? 12 EMA on Meta, doing a great job of holding up. The bulls are now coming up again closer to our year-to-date highs, guys. The gap fill area is in sight, right? 300 to about 315 is the sweet spot here for this gap fill, in my opinion, where we're going to encounter some likely resistance for the bulls. As of now, no signs of slowing down whatsoever. Four hour full control, daily full control, right? Daily RSI is overbought in a lot of these names. But like I said, again, guys, it's up to the bears to actually do something. Every chance they've got a chance to do something, there's just been no follow through. So until they actually follow through and reverse the daily uptrends on a lot of these charts, we can't be expecting extended weekly pullback. So that's why I'm taking it one day at a time once again, daily higher lows are set, right, with today. Still, if we were to pull back tomorrow, just a daily bull flag, guys. Anything above 269 is just going to be a daily higher low and a continued daily and weekly uptrend, all right? So that's it for Meta. NVIDIA, NVIDIA, right, this stock is absolutely ridiculous, guys. Absolutely ridiculous. I love it. I hope a lot of you guys own the stock. Congratulations to all the bulls who do, right? They are an absolute monster, weekly bulls, full control, extremely, extremely overbought, no secret there. Daily, decent come down, right? But we still do have some negative divergence here, some bearish divergence, just like Meta. So we'll see what comes out of it. But at this point in time, guys, even if we do pull back on the daily, like look, how much do we have to pull back for a daily higher low? 15% almost, anything above 375, is just going to be a daily higher low if we get a few red days in a row it may even take us down to the moving averages here so nvidia taking it one day at a time if i'm looking for a short i need to see a daily downtrend i need to see a daily downtrend because when we break this previous level here and set to the downside it's easy for me to enter a short here and put the stops above here right until that time why would i be looking short they just have not been able to do it so far right? So NVIDIA, congratulations to the bulls. Bulls are in absolute full control, guys. Until NVIDIA starts reversing, in my opinion, we're not going to get some broad market consolidation either, right? It really goes hand in hand. Now, Tesla, Tesla doing a great job here, guys. The bulls are absolutely crushing it. Daily RSI overbought, of course, no secret there. Weekly starting to get there, but I mean, Tesla, don't count on weekly RSIs, right? It can stay overbought for a long time. The next area that I'm eyeing for Tesla is 301 to 316. This whole area here is going to be a very, very, very pivotal level for Tesla. Let me actually draw it on the chart right now, right? So 316-ish, all the way down to 301. This whole area here is going to be the next area of resistance. I think that's where the bulls are targeting right now, right? Congratulations to anybody holding. At this point, anything above 248 is going to be a daily higher low. I did write some options, as a matter of fact, in this range right here, potentially expecting a pullback. There's really some good volatility on Tesla right now, so need to capitalize on it. I do have some long shares as well. We're just looking to play some options on it now. Weekly bulls in full control. Eventually, we're going to have to come back and set some sort of a weekly higher low. No sign that the bulls want to do now. Do that now. Keep your eye on the daily uptrend. Until we lose the daily uptrend, not going to get a weekly pullback, guys. So keep an eye out. 248 now at this point, anything above it is a daily higher low, right? Just keep an eye out for the bull exhaustion. Great, great, great job for Tesla. Palantir, Palantir pulling a little back today here. Getting, you know, didn't really like this candle here. That's kind of a really bearish candle. We are struggling here now to push to the higher levels, right? So now we can see 
curling until tesla looks like this chart you really won't get any indication that potentially momentum is cooling off right so palantir may be due for a weekly pullback but right all eyes are on the daily if we cannot lose the 12 ema it's not going to happen we're risking losing potentially at this point the daily highs and lows if it pulls back further this could set up for a daily trend change to the downside it would be very healthy i'm looking for palantir 14 dollars and below is the level that i will be looking to write options on palantir if that does happen now if we lose this level here 1550 ish right we will potentially have lost the daily higher lows at that point you're looking for the bulls to either gain them back or the bears can have a chance to take over so if we do get it if we do get the bears taking over i'm looking for 14 as a level to write options on but as of now anything right all of this move to the downside if we do get it we'll just be for a weekly higher low guys and on the monthly it would not surprise me that palantir is in for some good 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 trending months here into the next year because of their now profitability they now are also part of the new ai hype cycle right so a lot of good catalysts are behind palantir at this point talks of them potentially being added to the s p 500 so in my opinion any extended dips for myself for myself not financial advice will be for buying paypal finally finally what was i saying last week guys when are we going to get the four five six percent days on paypal well we're finally getting them in a big breakout fashion daily uptrend is now in motion perfect what are we doing we're doing exactly what i said we want to take back as much as this move of this move possible on the weekly so that the likely outcome when we do cool off the weekly is just a higher low compared to 59 that's what type of thing that we want to do and then set up for the weekly trend change if we can set up for the weekly trend change guys in a bullish overall market i think that this stock can run i like it i like the metrics i like how cheap it is in relation to where we are in terms of past price action and how much more revenue we have going into these price levels right very 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 attractive to me at this point anything above 62.83 is going to be your daily higher low so daily uptrend is in motion we're now about to start filling the gap right nice little gap here to fill from earnings wouldn't surprise me if we do continue the bullish momentum to the upside that bulls will have the juice to fill this i would love to see them fill this here without them giving up the daily uptrend because then at that point it really sets up for a potential weekly cup and handle and i would love to see that pattern guys because i do think that paypal will eventually be running to 80 90 and potentially even 100 dollars. i'm not going to start calling for all this yet one thing at a time but paypal for me looking very 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 nice so just keep in mind above the moving averages now for the first time in over a month since earnings above the moving averages in a daily uptrend in a weekly upswing need to keep this going as much of this as we can take back the better the shot that we set up for a weekly trend change right if we just stay down here and then go lower then you know what's going to happen right the bears have a great chance of doing this but the more we take back the more space we create the more space we create for something like this so that's kind of what i'm looking at now um so that's pretty much it if you guys want me to cover a uh, one more semiconductor amd amd i'm starting to get look at amd i would want amd around the 108 and below level i'm looking at amd if we can put in some more red days some decent consolidation here on amd guys nothing to shy away at 10 percent of consolidation right so we're in jeopardy of losing the daily higher lows right this was the level we wanted to watch so we are potentially in jeopardy of losing that at this point right so keep an eye on that if we do go for the gap fill here guys i will definitely be buying i'm just looking at this point for our weekly pullback it seems like it wants to be in motion as of now it's kind of like a tightening range i would say but if we do get a weekly pullback potentially i'm looking for 108 and below to be writing some options i do believe that amd would represent a very good buy at that level getting it anywhere below 108 you're getting at 38 percent off or 35 percent off all time highs i think it's a great position to actually have okay so now what i want to do guys is get into a bit of names here all right so nike 
Nike still pulling back today, had a great rally. I was able to exit a lot of my positions that I was assigned the weeks prior below 110. I was able to actually exit last week on the nice little Friday here in the 113 area. Was very happy about that because it had been a long period of drawdown. So quite happy that I was able to exit. Nike for me, they do have a little bit of an inventory problem. We'll see. They do have earnings here in the next week, pretty much, right? So next Thursday, not this Thursday. So really want to see what they say in earnings. If Nike for any reason starts dropping more towards the 100 area, I'm very, very much interested in writing some options anywhere below 103 to 100 or even below. I will be very interested because I do think that this will be a temporary thing, right? Nike right now is kind of in a bearish monthly cycle as if as are a lot of stocks, right? And we've seen what's happened with technology when they get out of it. So that's what I'm looking for for Nike. I think that it's kind of been unfairly beat down. And I think that we're getting into some good, good, good value here on this name specifically. But for the plays that I took this week, I will show you guys, okay? So Dollar Tree, the 131s for 55 cents, right? It's not quite half a percent, but on a name like Dollar Tree with such a big move, with such a big move required to the downside, right? I'm down here at 131. That would require another 4% move from here to Friday. If it happens, so be it. Why did I write it there? This has been a previous nice support level here, right? Very, very good support level. You can see it on the daily after earnings. This is exactly roughly where it rounded bottomed out. I would not mind picking up this stock pretty much at the lowest points that it's been over the past year and a half, okay? I still believe in this company. They're doing a very good job. They guided down with Dollar General because of the potential recession, so they're sandbagging their own results. We do have some good support down here, even below the 200 weekly moving average, and you can see how long in history this stock has ever traded below its 200 week moving average, the green line. Not very many times at all, and when it does, it usually tends to bump back right away. This is COVID, so I kind of discount it as an outlier, but you see in 2021 here, traded below it and then snapped right back, right? So this name, whenever it does trend into value territory, deep value territory, it does tend to get bought up aggressively. So that's why I kind of wrote Dollar Tree for today, for Friday, right? Another one, end phase. End phase is a name that I've been talking to you guys about a lot. You see the three levels, the three potential levels that the stock may go to if the downside continues. But I do believe that we are getting, you know, we are kind of using this 150, 160 level as our new higher lows on the larger term timeframes, right? So big, big, big rips up. And now the monthly chart is looking to set a relative higher low compared to our previous lows down here, right? So these things do take some time. I do believe, however, that the 160 area does represent some good, good, good temporary support for now. At least it has all the way since earnings for the last two months. So that's the area that I did target for end phase because I do believe, guys, that we are potentially due here for a nice upswing to at least fill this gap, right? A big, big, big gap to fill for 220. Decent, decent, decent numbers by end phase. If you guys don't know, revenues are expanding very, very, very nicely on a year to year basis. Margins are also very, very high. The only reason they got brought down is because of the news that the housing market may slow down and end phase being a solar power company. Well, a solar panel company and inverter company, you can imagine that potentially their sales may dwindle if more people are looking to save money and not necessarily invest in their homes. So end phase, I wrote the 162s, which is right in our decent little support area down here, right? The 162s here, I've been playing the stock a lot for 86%, roughly half a percent, right? So half a percent from our 162, right? So what's half of 162? It's about 181.7 ish or something like that, right? So it's about it's around 81.7, just above half a percent in premium for the week for end phase. Really light on these puts. You guys can see I only wrote one contract each. Was not sure about the day today. Was expecting more pullback. So I wrote what I could. And tomorrow, if we do get some better premium, potentially another red day, I will scale into these positions because I do think that the positions are good. I like the levels a lot. Now, Generac, GNRC, you guys can see the 121s for 55 cents, just under half a percent as well, right? What's half of 121? 60.5. So at this point, 60.5 would have been a true half a percent, slightly under. I don't mind too much because this is very good pr uh, premium for this company. The 121s, Generac, 
They were not a red day. Usually I like writing stuff when it's on a red day, guys. However, Generac did have a very positive day today, up 8%, so they increased the volatility. That's why I was able to get some good premium on options here in the morning here today. So you can see that 121, if I draw a line at 121 here, it will be right around this level here, which I agree with you is not the bottom end of this range. However, I do appreciate that this stock is on a nice little uptrend here on the weekly that's what sold it for me we're now clearly clearly above our moving averages here at this point we have set up the weekly trend change i love to see it i do believe that this stock is potentially now bottomed out on the monthly as well so i think we're going to get a little bit of mean reversion would not be surprised if this stock pulls up into the 140s generac very very good company as well if you guys don't know guys increasing revenues very, very decent margins for this company. Market cap, obviously not that large at all. And we're still significantly, obviously this is the bubble top, right? 2021, but we are still at this point, 75% off of all time highs for a company that's consistently growing revenues and consistently going to be useful in the future. So very, very happy with my position. Could I have waited a little bit for a red day or whatnot? Yes, but I like the premium. I've been wanting to add a position on this company and I just wasn't finding the premium at 115 or lower, whereas where I should have been written, honestly, but I do feel comfortable with this position here uh, at the 121 with the premium that I did get. PayPal is just a sold call against the position from last week, right? 100 shares here. I have a lot more shares in my long-term uh, share portfolio. Long-term, pretty much almost no touch, you know, long swing trade portfolio. This PayPal position was just a slight PayPal position that I took a couple weeks ago. Finally able to write some calls at it. If it does get called away at 70, perfect, no problem at all. I have about a thousand more shares, shares elsewhere. That's fine also have a long call option in this account. So we'll be writing this one out, right? This is a leap for next June. So PayPal, this sold call, not too worried about it. Even if it does get called away at 70, right? I won't be losing too much. I'll only be losing like 50 bucks on those shares, right? But at least did want to write some premium against it um, now that we are up to the higher level. So we'll see what happens with that. Tesla is my last position that I did write for today. So Tesla, Needs no introduction, right? As I was saying, guys, anything pretty much above 248, 250 is going to be your daily higher low. So I kind of got a bit, tiny bit greedy with it. I went for the 255s, offering very, very decent premium here. That's pretty much almost half a percent, right? 1.2. If you divide 255 by half, that's roughly what you'll, you'll kind of end up, right? It's roughly between, you know, 125, 126, 127-ish, right? But I got 120 for them, so really, really happy about that. As a matter of fact, they have already run a little, little bit, so we are up decently on this option already. Tesla up even more after hours. I don't think you guys can see it anymore, but they did continue to run after hours a bit more here. If I do turn on, let's say I turn on the after hours trading here. You'll see that in extended hours, we did even push up even further now, 278. So I wouldn't be surprised if this option is, you know, more than 50% uh, in the uh, in profit tomorrow, right? I, right at the open. So very, very good on Tesla. But if we have another red day tomorrow, guys, I will be averaging into this position, okay? And to most of all these positions and potentially looking for more, right? Always on the scout for more. But for now, as of today, right? Took it, took it really, really light because I was expecting today to pull back, which it did, um, but didn't get as much pullback as I would have liked. So I'm looking to potentially add to some of these positions with more contracts or seeking other positions from tomorrow till Friday. But obviously it's a shortened week, so I wasn't able to go really, really too, too heavy on everything. I usually don't when we do end up with a shorter holiday week like this. Uh, portfolio performance, I want to be transparent with you guys, right? This is kind of like the new format of the videos that I'm going to. So as you can see, guys, we are up on, this is the year-to-day chart of this portfolio. Very, very good, my trading portfolio that I also use whenever I need to, you know, whenever I need to withdraw some money for it for XYZ purposes as well. As well. Usually I do beat the market quite comfortably, so I really don't mind withdrawing I've withdrawn about, you know, maybe seven, eight percent of this account since the peak in April. So doing a really, really good job despite that, even though I did get assigned some positions. As you see, we did get some drawdown here, but now the account is, you know, I'm very, very happy with this year to day performance. Can't complain. If we're comparing it to SPY, you can see SPY down here, this blue line, right? The SPY year to date, almost about 15%. We're running pretty much almost 49%, really, really good. And we are beating the NASDAQ as well, which is always very, very good as well, right? You can see that at a certain point, we were beating the NASDAQ, something atrocious, right? But I was able to withdraw from this account, 
take a few losses. And even that, we are still above the NASDAQ, right? So the options wheel does work on a long-term basis in markets that aren't completely just rugging people to the downside. Like last year, you have to be really, really careful. But in markets that are trending or sideways, this strategy, in my opinion, does perform the best that I've tested over the last 11 years of my trading career. And most of my high-performing clients, when I used to work as a stockbroker and portfolio advisor at the bank, all of my active traders, people with 10, 20, 30, $50 million in their account, if they were actively trading, they were trading the options wheel. So it's no secret, this strategy is very, very, very powerful. As you can see, we're outperforming the NASDAQ here as well. NASDAQ year-to-date gains, we're running here roughly about 31%. And as you can see, my portfolio 48.95. If you don't believe me, you can just go QQQ year-to-date here. QQQ year-to-date, right, 38% with... Um, 38%, so I guess there's a little bit of lag on this, maybe not encompassing today. Yeah, you can see the blue line, it's kind of cheating. My portfolio went up, but there's no blue line for today. Um, so QQQ, 38.73%. Well, QQQ is not the NASDAQ, you guys know that, right? Um, so we are outperforming the NASDAQ as well. 49%, right, versus the QQQ, we're outperforming it by about 10%. So it can't be, you know, very, very happy with my performance. So that's pretty much it for today's video. I will be sharing more plays, more portfolio performance going forward. We're going to be, you know, try to be as transparent as possible with you guys because I know that's what you guys love. So if you like the video, consider giving me a like, consider giving me a subscribe. I love you guys. I wish you nothing but the best in your trading. I hope you guys have been doing well, especially in these markets. I really hope you do. And I will catch you tomorrow for another video. Take care, guys. Peace.